Hello again. That recent question about what is my favourite book has inspired me to create a whole another series of little films about different books that I love and all to do with the permaculture of course and um, some of them will be quite old books and you'll know that they're popular with me because of the state they're in <laughs> and some of them will be rather newer and so what I've decided to do for this particular little video is to show you three that I've come across this year which I really like so they all look quite nice and clean and new still um, but these have uh, inspired me very much this year so I'm going to start with this one Peter Volobin presumably uh, his book The Hidden Life of Trees now this is a book that I'd heard about a couple of places and uh, was already quite familiar with trees and such so I was thinking well maybe it's just another one of those books that will tell me things that I already know but actually this one was fascinating from the, the moment of opening the, the cover and starting to delve in and um, I highly recommend this is just a book for anybody who loves uh, anything to do with nature but trees in particular it really reveals a whole layer of things that go on below the surface and uh, it's not a book that has many pictures it has a few little sketch drawings of trees occasionally but as you can see it's essentially text but the text is fascinating so um, that's my first choice the second choice was a book that um, in May I was teaching a design course in Warwickshire and the mother of the woman who was hosting the course came up to me with a book and she said oh you must read this and um, and I was, I thought, oh yes, another book, of course. <laughs> and uh, and so I just took note of it and I did actually borrow it briefly, but I was so busy fixing up a bicycle that I didn't get around to reading it. But I took a mental note. Um, and then I got home and one of the emails I had was also about this book. Somebody had been writing about the book. And then I opened my post and my cousin had sent me uh, an article, <laughs> which was this one here. Now my cousin hardly ever writes to me at all you know, so uh, to get something from her was quite surprising and it was all about the farm which was written about in the book so I thought okay I need to get the book. So I did and the book in question that you may also have come across is this one. Um, this is the hardback presumably by now you can get the soft cover which would be a bit cheaper of course and uh, it's called Wilding and for me, I've been familiar with the rewilding movement for a few years. It's very inspiring, but of course, one of the challenges is we humans, we're quite tasty, and so we don't like to see big predators in the landscape, hence the reason for many of them being hunted to extinction. And we've become more and more aware of the consequences of that in the overall ecosystem, because once you take away the top-level predators, then uh, you have to then manage the animals that they would eat and of course many of those animals we've been farming but what's been very what's particularly interesting about this book is that it's all about um, a farm that was previously dairy and arable in Sussex about half an hour's drive from London uh, in fact not very far from where I grew up curiously uh, three and a half thousand acres now for many of us most of us three and a half thousand acres is way beyond the um, the land that one would ever get to look after um, and yet what's interesting is that many wildlife reserves uh, are much smaller than this and there are consequences to that whenever we look at scale some things need to be bigger and wild animals wild herbivores need enough space to move through the landscape to allow the land to recover behind them to leave the parasite eggs and so on behind them and and to and through that process create new habitats and so what's occurred the story that's told in this book which for me is fascinating and also inspirational it gives me hope is that um, they're a dairy farm and an arable farm uh, and they basically couldn't afford to run anymore because of financial constraints it just wasn't profitable and so they uh, to cut a long story short took out all the internal fences put a big fence around the outside and just basically put in some uh, grazing animals that were as close as possible to the wild versions of those that we farm today sort of some deer and pigs and 
horses, wild kind of horses and cattle and so on. And, um, and basically stood back and see what happens. And it's all about the birds that came back and the butterflies and the insect life and the plants that come in and so on. It just tells the story of the transformation of this habitat. Um, and for me, this is just really inspiring to see that can still be happening and that people with that much land are actually willing or take the risk to step back and see what happens. So for me, this is a fascinating book, uh, very inspiring and a brilliant read. So my third choice, those two are very much about nature and human intervention with nature. The third book is a rather different kind of book, but again, perhaps this is a good gift for somebody who's quite practical. I'm quite a practical person. I like to make things. This is the permaculture book of DIY. And why I, why I particularly like this is that for many years, there have been solutions. There's a solutions page in permaculture magazine and people will tell you how to make a pallet bench or how to make a pig arc or whatever it is. And, and they've all been, all the best ones have been put together basically into one book. So they could all be easy to find rather than buried in a big pile of magazines somewhere. And yes, yeah, so this is anything from simple projects like making things from pallets right through to towards the end. There's, you know, Bendor's Bentwood chairs and natural swimming pools, which are really just an introduction. Those little articles at the back are really introductions to those things, which are described in much more detail in um, their own books. But many of these projects, um, it's... It's a book that's full of pictures. Well, and information how to make things, the 12 volt solar power thing. That's an excellent book as well. You need to be a fairly technical person, but it's all about how to turn anything to run on 12 volts. Homemade paints, um, uh, reciprocal roofing, compost solar heating, uh, stuff to do with woolen under blankets blah, blah, blah. my favorite one is the self-watering container garden and this basically um, tells you how to put some plumbing together and the boxes and basically so that the water plants can always wick up the water from underneath and it's um, controlled by float valve and they all just look like really nice plant beds but you can go away for weeks at a time and your plants are basically watering themselves as long as there's enough water in the water butt of course or your container in these perhaps it needs to be bigger where you are um so yes some excellent an excellent book full of ideas very inspiring quite practical um, and definitely one for somebody with a practical bent so in terms of these three i would say fascinating inspiring and I think probably I would say empowering, something there for everyone.